There has never been a better time to buy a MacBook, and I've read hundreds of your questions asking for advice. Well, today I'm going to answer them. What MacBook is right for my specific use case at my budget? Should I upgrade from an older model? All the big questions will be answered. Now, so that I don't repeat explanations that are needed in many of my answers, I'm only going to explain key concepts once. That means that this is a video to watch right through, even if you think a question doesn't apply to you. Once you've decided which MacBook you want to buy, you want to get the best price on it, obviously. That's where our website, JustJosh.Tech, comes into play. It is the hub for laptop buying. We scour the internet to find the best deals and we post them there. We even have a helpful price tracker to ensure that you're buying at the best time. What MacBook should you buy for home or office use? If all you're doing is light tasks like using office applications, video conferencing, browsing the web and that sort of thing, any MacBook Air is going to be fine for you. Your safest bet is to get one with 16 gig of memory and at least 512 gig of storage. If you are budget constrained and just can't afford that, you will be fine with an older model with 8 gig of memory and 256 gig of storage. Those are now heavily discounted and should be purchased for around $700 or ideally less. The main difference is that the 8GB of memory model will be restrictive on what you can do on your laptop. Plus, it's not going to give you the same longevity. When it comes to deciding between an Air 13 or 15, this is really up to you. Do you want more portability or more productivity? Almost everything else is the same about these two laptops, other than the Air 15 having a slightly larger battery. It ends up lasting a smidge longer. If you can afford it, an upgraded pick for home or office use is a MacBook Pro 14 with a base M4 processor. It has a 14.2 inch display that is of a higher quality than the Airs. It is brighter, it has a fast refresh rate, and you can even upgrade it to a nanotexture display for reduced glare. The Pro also has a more comfortable keyboard, which I appreciate. The Airs feels low travel, which is why I personally just don't use them. The Pro has a better webcam, better speakers, and better port selection. You get an HDMI port, an SD card reader, and an extra Thunderbolt port on the right side, which is convenient, as you can charge the laptop from either side. And on the ports, these new M4 MacBook Pros allow you to hook up up to two external monitors while using the laptop's display. Previously, you'd have to close the laptop's lid to do that. Finally, and obviously, the MacBook Pro is significantly more powerful. It uses a new M4 processor, which is a big step up from the processors that are in the Airs. And inside the Pro is a fan to keep its processor cool during performance tasks. This laptop is going to be a much better bet if you want more flexibility. Say you want to try your hand at creating a YouTube channel like this one, or perhaps programming a website like ours. Before we continue, a quick word from today's video sponsor, Ugreen. They have some great deals on right now. The Ugreen Nexo Powerbank 25,000 mAh battery holds enough power to recharge most laptops more than once and a mobile device more than five times. It can supply a total of 145 watts of power. If you use the first USB-C port, you can use 140 watts of that to charge a MacBook Pro 16 inch from zero to 56% in just 30 minutes. The Powerbank also has a digital display that will show you its remaining battery. Then there is the Ugreen Nexo 100 watt charger. As the name implies, you can charge a single USB-C powered laptop up to 100 watts. Perfect for your new MacBook Pro 14. Like all Nexo chargers, you can charge multiple devices at the same time, three via USB-C and one via USB-A. And since it uses GAN charging technology, it is small and portable. Check out the links below for some big sales on these great devices. What MacBook should you buy for school? For school, I recommend the exact same laptops as home or office users, with one adjustment. If you go for a MacBook Air, you're probably going to want the 13-inch for its increased portability over the 15. If you can afford it, the M4 MacBook Pro 14, as I said, is a much better machine and gives you a lot more flexibility. The only students I would recommend something different for are those studying disciplines that require more powerful machines. For these students, I'd recommend buying the lower spec laptop that I'm going to recommend for the specific discipline you're studying. And on that note, what should you buy for programming? For programmers, as the saying goes, you can code on any laptop. So any MacBook will work. But please, please get one with at least 16 gig of memory. Programmers have more applications running at the same time than your average user. But if we're talking about what I actually recommend, as I was a professional software developer for many years, here's what you should buy. At a minimum, I'd like to see you with that MacBook Pro 14 with the base M4 processor. It comes standard with 16 gig of memory and its screen is high quality, which makes it fantastic for viewing lots of small code. As I've already mentioned, the rest of the laptop is premium. Now, I'd love to see you with a bit more memory, 
I believe a MacBook Pro 14 or 16 with one of the M4 Pro chips is the most ideal choice for coders right now, if you can afford it. Programmers like CPU performance and a good amount of memory, and these laptops give you both. The M4 Pro processors are very powerful. It may look like the M4 Pro 12 core is only 20% faster than the M4 10 core, but when you factor in how much more of its cores are performance cores and its faster memory bandwidth, it is significantly faster than that processor. And as I said, you get 24 gig of memory out of the box. That is enough for the vast majority of developers. For example, you can run an 8 gig VM and keep 16 gig for your system. And MacBook Pros with an M4 Pro or Max chip have a more robust two-fan cooling solution. The cheaper 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M4 processor only has one. If you're choosing between the M4 Pro 12 or 14 core, get the 14 core. We were surprised that the 14 core not only performs a little better than the 12 core, but runs a tad cooler under max load for the same fan noise. Perhaps this is due to processor binning or something like that, but that's out of scope for this video. What should you buy for machine learning and AI? When it comes to machine learning and AI, you guys love lots of fast memory and a powerful GPU. The M4 Max MacBook Pros are clearly the best option, the highest end M4 Max chip being the most desirable, as it has the fastest memory and comes with 48 gig of it, and it has the most powerful GPU. What should you buy for video editing? For video editors, you need lots of memory, fast memory, media encoding engines, and lots of GPU cores. To edit one of the videos that you're watching right now without dropped frames, Premiere Pro almost completely maxes out the GPU of my M4 Max MacBook Pro 16 16 core, and it uses around 38 gig of memory. Media engines are also important because video editing involves a lot of compressed footage that you need to decode and then re-encode when you export. Max chips have two media engines, whereas Pro chips have one, so they are much faster for exporting. Putting everything together, video editors should buy an M4 Max equipped MacBook Pro 16, and if you can afford the more powerful variant, get that one. Now, unless you're editing off a NAS, professional video editors are one of the only people I'd strongly recommend considering an upgrade above a stock configuration. One terabytes of storage just isn't that much for modern footage, and 512 gig is just a complete joke. Two terabytes is just a much safer amount. If you can't afford a MacBook Pro 16 with a Max chip, get one with an M4 Pro 14 core processor. That laptop did surprisingly well in our video editing tests. As you may have noticed, for video editors, I've been specifically recommending the MacBook Pro 16, not the 14. You really will want that extra screen real estate, unless you plug into an external monitor, of course. On that note, warning about getting a Max chip in the smaller MacBook Pro 14. Its cooling solution is not as robust, and the Max chip just performs noticeably worse than in a MacBook Pro 16. I'm not saying you shouldn't get a Max chip in a 14 inch, for some buyers this does make sense, but you just won't be getting the full value of what you're paying for. What should you buy for photo editing? For photo editing, you really don't need anything more than an M4 Pro MacBook Pro 16. Again, same deal here as video editors, you'll likely want that larger display. What should you buy as a 3D artist? For 3D content creation, you'll want lots of GPU cores and lots of fast memory. An M4 Max MacBook Pro is what you should get. If you can't afford that, get a MacBook Pro with a 14 core CPU and a 20 core GPU. What should you buy for architecture, interior design, or engineering? For these folks, you also do rendering, but your rendering, it tends to be more basic just to showcase your designs rather than something completely photorealistic. For you, any MacBook Pro with an M4 Pro chip is going to be perfect. And if you want a less pricey option, you'll be fine with a MacBook Pro 14 with M4. Alright, no matter what you're going to be doing on your laptop, I'm sure that you're getting anxious about whether you should upgrade it when you buy, as of course, these laptops can't be upgraded later on, unfortunately. So, should you upgrade your MacBook? Apple's upgrades are extremely overpriced, and as I've said, Apple does not discount their laptops, and that's who you likely be buying from if you customize. So please consider that the true price of an upgrade is its price plus the amount you're missing out on by not being able to take advantage of a sale. Assuming that you can get $200 off a stock model from a retailer, there are actually several cases where it's better to step up an entire model versus upgrade. For example, if you're upgrading storage in the M4 Pro 12 core, wait for the 14 core to go on sale and get that, as it comes with one terabyte. Do you need more memory? This year's increase to the starting memory of many MacBooks, very few people will need to upgrade from the models I've already recommended. And I want to vent a frustration here. How much memory that you need is one of the most incorrectly communicated things on YouTube. 
Many people open Activity Monitor and see all their memory used up and think that they need more. That is not the case. Your operating system will leave applications in memory that are not currently in use and also cache files there if there happens to be free memory. So using that approach, it almost always looks like you're running out of memory. To correctly determine if you need more, go about your normal day while regularly looking at the memory pressure graph in Activity Monitor. If that is often yellow or even red, then you do need more memory. What about the nanotexture display? Is that worth it? Our MacBook Pro with the nanotexture display finally arrived. It significantly reduces reflections from very bright light sources. It's similar to a matte display, so content looks flatter and less vibrant. Unfortunately, what you will notice with that display is that there is a screen door effect. That's where when you look closely at white coloured content, you can see tiny coloured pixels peeping through. I find that distracting and it isn't noticeable on the regular display. Another downside to consider is of course that it is a custom config as I've already talked about. You could be missing out on buying it on sale at a retailer. If you factor that in, the true cost of this upgrade is higher than its list price. My two cents, MacBook Pros already have very bright screens, which helps combat reflections. And this year's displays get even brighter when they detect direct sunlight. I have used hundreds of laptops in a variety of environments all around the world, and MacBook Pros, they are some of the best at handling reflections that you'd find indoors. I'd only get this upgrade if you plan to frequently use your laptop outside. But if you are conscious about value, a good question is, should you save money by buying an older M3 MacBook Pro, which are now heavily discounted? The truth is, M4 MacBook Pros are substantially better than M3s. That release was a bit of a dud. In fact, in a couple of ways, the M3 MacBook Pros were worse than the M2s. I have a video out on that, which I'll link below. The base M4 MacBook Pro 14 is significantly better than the M3 version. Not only does it have a much faster processor, but it now starts at 16 gig of memory instead of eight. It has a third Thunderbolt port on the right side, which is convenient, and it has better external display support. The M4 Pro MacBook Pros are massively faster than their M3 Pro counterparts. Not only more cores, but more of them are performance cores. You also get more memory, the memory is faster, the ports are Thunderbolt 5, and a brighter display. So for these configurations, I really feel the M3 MacBook Pros need to be at least $400 or less than their M4 counterparts. But pro tip. Before you dismiss the M3 MacBook Pros, I found something interesting. The older M3 Pro 12 core actually performs around the same in multi-core as the new M4 10 core. But because the older one is technically from the better Pro range of chips, it comes with that two fan cooling solution and two gigs of extra memory. So that one I'd legitimately consider buying over the MacBook Pro 14 M4 base model, assuming they now cost around the same. When it comes to the more powerful M4 Max equipped MacBook Pro 14s and 16s, far less has changed on paper. That's versus the older M3 Max models. But in the real world, I have edited our videos on both. I get noticeably less drop frames on my new M4 Max equipped MacBook Pro 16, and it doesn't feel as warm to the touch while I edit. So again, I'd like to see at least a $400 discount to buy an older M3 Max model. What about if you already have an older MacBook Pro? Should you upgrade? If you're coming from an Intel Mac, Absolutely. If you're coming from an M1, you will notice that these new MacBooks are significantly snappier even in daily tasks. If you're coming from M2 or M3, only upgrade if you're facing a performance problem. In my case, it made sense to upgrade to an M4 Max because I was getting significantly more drop frames in Premiere Pro on my older models. I want to keep my MacBook for five to eight years. What should I buy? I never ever recommend buying a laptop to keep it for that long. People who do this massively overspend on upgrades that they just don't need and may never need. It's better to put that money aside and upgrade sooner. You'll get a ton more for your money. I recommend selling and upgrading your laptop every three to four years. MacBooks have a higher resale value than Windows laptops, so that helps. Think about how much laptops have improved over the last six years. If you had bought a MacBook expecting to keep it for eight years, right now you'd be on an Intel MacBook with a touch bar and a broken butterfly keyboard. Should you buy a MacBook on credit? Finally, Apple is heavily pushing you to take out a loan to buy one of their shiny new MacBooks on credit. Do not buy a laptop if you can't afford it. Seriously, I love Macs, but they aren't worth going into debt over. 
If you don't already own a house and a car or aren't on track to, please don't overspend on a MacBook. Being totally transparent, which I always am, for most people there are so few times where the benefits of a higher spec model is going to be noticeable. So please, buy what you can afford. And on that note, I would strongly consider buying a return model also known as an open box. You can save a ton going that route, and those models are normally still covered by Apple's warranty. Before I end, I have a favour to ask. Only 17% of our viewers are currently subscribed. The effort that I and the team are putting in is huge. I hope you can see that. And we want to make better videos for you, and we want to make more of them so we can cover all the tech you're asking us to. Getting subscribed and clicking the like button is something free and easy that you can do to help support us. And if you want to do more, become a Patreon subscriber or YouTube member, links down below. Good luck with your laptop buying, make sure to check out the deals on our website. Until next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.